What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're going to be going over pagination or infinite scrolling, whatever you want to refer to it as, and we're going to be implementing all of this in Jetpack Compose. So pagination or infinite scrolling is just referring to being able to load up some data scrolling all the way to the to the bottom of that list and loading some more data, kind of like, you know, Instagram or any of these other social networks where you you continuously load data as you scroll. So that's what we're going to be implementing today. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. And as you can see here, I'm using Android Studio Canary 13. So if you want to follow along, you're going to probably need Canary 13 or above, depending on when you're watching this. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new project and I'm just going to start off with an empty compose activity. All right, so once your project's all loaded up, the first thing that we need to do is head over to the build.gradle file for our project. So let's open that up. And as you can see here, I'm using compose version 1.0.0 alpha 04. Very important that you that you have that. And then next, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're import that we have Maven Central in our repositories. All right, so I have Maven Central added. Let's go over to the build.gradle file for our module. And what we need to do in our dependencies is we need to add in a couple of different things. We're going to need the compose runtime and the compose compiler. So let's go ahead and add those in as well. All right. So as you can see, we have the compiler and take note that compiler did change to this uh, syntax instead of the dash syntax like this. It's now a colon. So just make sure that you have that in there correctly. And then um, I have the, the runtime and also runtime live data. We're going to be using live data in this in this uh, tutorial. Then we just simply have to sync our Gradle file. All right, perfect. All synced up. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to actually create an animal class. That's going to be what we're going to be displaying in our list. So let's create a new file for that. So as you can see, we have a very simple, straightforward class right here that's going to store our data. It's going to be an animal object, and it has an ID, an emoji, and a name. Nothing too crazy going on here. Next, what we have to do is we have to create a view model for our main activity. So let's go ahead and create another file to hold that as well. So now we have our main activity view model and it conforms to view model. And this main activity view model has a function on it called get animals. So we won't be doing networking today. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to simulate a networking request and we're going to be getting data or pages um, based off of the current index. And we're just going to hard code those values. So let's go ahead and create a, a, a mutable list for the animals that we plan on getting back and then also create a when statement um, giving us the specific animals for that specific page. All right, so as you can see here, we have this animals mutable list and we have a when statement right here. We don't have a current page yet. I'm going to go over that in a bit, but we have a, a when statement that's essentially adding on a list of animals based off of whichever page is passed in. So when we pass in the first page, which is the zero index or the zero page, we're going to get this list of animals right here. And then if we pass in one for the page or the next index or um, the second page, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get this list of animals right here. And then nothing's going to happen any other time. That's all I felt like typing out. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and create a property on our view model that's going to keep track of which current page we're on. So let's go ahead and uh, add that property into our view model. All right, so I decided to change it to next page. I thought that made a little bit more sense for this specific situation. But anyways, we have a next page uh, variable right here, and we're still going to be switching off of that specific variable. Now, uh, when we get it the first time, we're just going to get the first one, and it's going to be this array, right, this list. And what we want to do is every time after we get a list of animals, we want to increment the next page. So the first time the next page is going to be zero, but after that it should be one, right? So let's go ahead and make sure we increment the next page as well at the end of our get animals list. 
All right, so now every time we call this, we have, uh, every time we call get animals, we're going to make sure that we increment the next page so that we're never getting back the same data. Next, what we need to do is we need to actually be able to provide data outside of this view model. And we're gonna actually be doing that by creating a live data property. So we're gonna have live data of an array of animals. And that's what we're gonna actually use to build out our list inside of Compose, uh, inside of our main activity using composable functions. So let's create that, that property as well. So here we have the value called live animals and it's of type mutable live data and it's returning a value of a list of animals. So what we can do since we're taking these animals, we're adding the next page of animals to this uh, mutable list of animals. And then down here, what we can do is we can set those animals as the new live data. So here we go. So now we're going to be updating this live data every time we call get animals, which is perfect. Next, let's head back over to our main activity. And now we can actually implement our view uh, instance of our view model. So here's our late init view model right here. And it's of type main activity view model, as you can see. And we're just going to set that uh, view model in our on create method. So we're going to do view model provider, which is going to be this uh, main activity. And then we're going to do get main activity view model and pass it in. So that'll create the instance of our view model. So now what we need to do is we need to update our UI. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this boilerplate stuff that was added in here because we don't need you no more. You're not needed no more. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new uh, Jetpack Compose function, which is going to be called Animal List. So let's go ahead and add that in now. Our composable function, Animal List, is going to be taking in an uh, argument of live animals. So essentially, it's going to be taking in those live animals that we're going to be providing by the view model. And before we actually implement the UI here, what I want to do is I want to actually implement a scaffold so that it makes our app look like an app and it's not just like this super ugly thing. So I'm going to implement a scaffold and make sure that we pass in animal list uh, for, its, um, for its body. So now inside of our set content, we have a scaffold and it has a top bar, which is going to have a top app bar that has a title that says animals. So we're going to essentially be showing that it looks a little bit cleaner just so that you know what you're looking at in case you can't figure it out for whatever reason. Right. Anyways, and we're actually calling our animal list composable function right here and passing in the view model dot live animals, which is great. All we need to do now is we need to make sure that we are implementing our animal list right here and giving it some UI. So let's go ahead and start constructing the UI in our animal list. So what we're doing here is we're getting the animals out of our live animals, our live data list, right? And we're doing that by calling by live animals dot observe as state and we're also providing it an initial state which is an empty list now um, for whatever reason uh, android studio does not import the correct things in order to get this to work so what we're going to do is we're going to scroll back up to the top and we have to import a couple of different runtime things so the first thing that we need is to make sure that we have the runtime dot live dot live data dot observe as state then what we also need is um, the runtime dot get value. So I think if we so as long as we have this get value here, we should be able to use the by keyword in order to abstract to abstract out the different animals as a list. And if you take a look at the value of animals now, you're getting a list of animals, which is exactly what we want. So now what we need to do is we need to pass this list of animals into a lazy column. So let's do that now. All right, and just like that, we have our lazy column for items and the items are gonna be 
are animals, of course. And then we have an animal being passed into each uh, into this closure right here. So um, every time it passes in a different animal, we're just going to create a list item that has an icon of the animal emoji. And then the text is going to be simply the animal's name. So let's go ahead and run our app and let's see if everything is working as we expect it to. But before we do that, we have to make sure that we call uh, get animals because at this point we haven't called get animals on our view model and it's going to populate with nothing if we don't call get animals, right? So let's do that. All right, so we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and run this thing and let's see if it works or not. And hey, what do you know? I know how to program, so I guess... I guess I'm not doing too bad, right? All right, so uh, as you can see, we get our first page, right? And everything is working as expected. The only thing that I wanna change about about our current UI right now is just the amount of space each, uh, each list item is taking up, simply because I want to be able to scroll down and then when I hit the last one, I that's when we're gonna actually call get more animals, right? But right now I'm almost able to see all the animals in this current view just because my phone is so long, I guess. So I'm just gonna update the padding. So let's let's do that right now. All right, so as you can see here, nothing too crazy. Just added our modifier with some vertical padding, 30 on top, 30 on bottom. And let's run it again just to make sure that everything's all spaced out. I like breathing room, okay? Oh yeah, that's much nicer. Look at, you can breathe for days up in here. Look at, breathing, straight breathing for days. Okay, awesome. So now what we wanna do is we want to actually be able to get more, um, get our next page, right? So we want to go, and if we take a look at our main activity view model, we should be able to get more animals once we scroll all the way to the bottom and it should be seamless, right? So what we need to do in our main activity is instead of using this lazy column four items, what we wanna do is we want to use lazy column four indexed. And what that's going to allow us to do is actually get the index of these animals. And when I get to the last index, what I wanna do is I want to call get animals. And since our, our get animals function is going to be updating the next page at the end, when we call it next, this next page will be one. So we'll actually be getting all the animals at the second index or the second page. So let's go ahead and update our main activity to be lazy column for indexed. So lazy column for indexed is pretty much the same exact thing as lazy column four, um, except now we have this index right here that's being passed into the, into the Lambda and we can just go ahead and run an if statement to check if it's the last index, and if it is, then we just simply call viewmodel.getAnimals. So it's as simple as that. We're just making sure it's the last index, and if it is, we're going to call get models or get animals. So let's go ahead and run the app again, and let's see if it works as we expect it to. All right, here we go, moment of truth. Did we do it right? Do we know what we're doing? And we don't oh no it blew up so what's going on here is that i think that i updated it wrong and if if we go ahead and take a look at our animals and if we actually take a look at our animals we're actually going to see the problem is because every time we call get animals we're going to be creating this new mutable list so what we actually want to do is we want to use the current value of live data or our live animals and append to that if it has a value, right? We don't wanna create this empty list because then what's going to happen is when it calls one, it's going to essentially be replacing that entire list with this new page. And then when we call, when we call the end at, at the end of one, it's gonna call two and it's gonna just simply be an empty list. So that's why we ended up getting an empty list at the end of it. So let's go ahead and make that change right now. All right, so as you can see, instead of just creating a new list every time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the live animals.value, change that to a mutable list right here. Whoa, change that to a mutable list right here. And then if it is empty, then we'll just give, go ahead and give it an empty list, which will happen on the first call. So let's try that again. I think that we got it this time. And um, let's see if we're able to continue to scroll. All right, let's try it again. Let's try it again. We're scrolling, we're scrolling, we're scrolling. 
We're scrolling. We're scrolling. Oh, look at that. We know what we're doing. We know what we're doing. We're programmers, guys. We're programmers. All right. Awesome. So as you can see, you were able to scroll all the way down and get to the bug. And we actually found a bug in, in our tutorial right here, but we figured it out. So that's going to be it for today. I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any other topics that you would like covered, make sure you leave them in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. That's going to do it for today. Thank you for your time. Now go out there and keep coding passionately.